We are in the season of hope. How many of us are hoping for something this morning? It may not be for us. It may be for a friend, a relative, or a loved one. It may even be for Jamaica or for the world. But we all are hoping for something. Hope is a mainstay for us. It is the confident expectation of what God has promised. And its strength is in his faithfulness. No matter what we go through in life, my friends, the healing grace of God gives us hope. We hope to conquer and to be victorious. So, hope makes the heart glad. Let us affirm this together. Hope makes my heart glad. Hope makes my heart glad. Amen. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, beloved friends, all we need to do is to believe. It says, whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So all we need to do is to believe, but that is the hard part, my friends. We say we believe, but when you get that disturbing test result from the doctors, when you're down to rock bottom and you can't pay your bills, when your only child gets sick and die, when nothing are gone for you, it's not easy to believe. But God's promises are sure. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, which my sister Lorna read so beautifully this morning. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So, beloved friends, only believe. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. So, only believe. When the road is dark and you don't know where to turn, do not panic. Do not look outside of you, my friends. Look, look within you. It's not in the people outside of you or the things outside of you. It is within you. You have all that power and authority right within you. Colossians 1.27 says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? In Matthew chapter 4, when the disciples faced the storm at sea, they were afraid. So they called out to Jesus, who was asleep at the back of the ship. Master, they said, do you care not if we perish? Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said, peace, be still. Immediately, there was a calm. Why were you fearful? Have you forgotten who and whose you are? 
Jesus said to them. Beloved friends, we all get a little overwhelmed sometimes when faced with challenges. And we sometimes wait on God to do something. God, why can't you fix this for me right now? Why can't you stop this pain? Why can't God send me some money? Why can't God heal my relationship? We're waiting for God to do something. But, beloved friends, God is right there with us. Just take a deep breath. All it takes is to become conscious of his presence and his power and take him at his word and you will be directed and led to do the right thing in order to reap your good. God cares, my friends. He comes to our rescue, even when we doubt. The thing is, Jesus is always on the boat with you. He may appear to be sleeping, but you have what it takes to wake him up. He will always respond, but you must call out to him. You can't take it for granted that he knows and he will. God will always respond, my friend, but you must call out to him. He sent Jesus the Christ to seek and to save that which was lost. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that he may be able to bear it. Can you imagine? We mess up. And God makes a way for us to clean up the mess. In the book of Jeremiah, when the Jews were sent to Babylon due to error thinking, they were very unhappy. As Babylon was a place of darkness and hardships, they yearned to go back home, to their true home in Jerusalem, a land of peace and joy. Nobody wants to be in Babylon. But even though the Israelites fell short in their thinking, hope was alive for them with God. God heard their cry. And he devised a plan for them to escape so that they were able to return to their homeland in Jerusalem. That's the goodness of God, my friends, which never fails. Isaiah the prophet predicted in Isaiah 7 verse 14, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So, the birth of Jesus signifies hope. God gave us the gift of Jesus always within us, my friends. And Jesus came with a purpose. He came to set us free from sickness and limitation. He came that we can rise above adversity and find hope for tomorrow. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We sometimes become frightened when our boat is rocked with a raging wind. Or we might find ourselves like the Israelites in Babylon, faced with hardships due to error thinking, and we all fall short. We all entertain thoughts of negation at times, my friends. But there is hope. Jesus is on call. Just change your thoughts about the situation. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my words be that goeth forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. You are in the Babylon state of consciousness, falsely separated from your good when you affirm things like, I am poor, I am sick, I am needy, I am not good enough, I do not have enough. So erase from your consciousness, error thinking and claim your good. The truth is, We can never be separated from our good except in our thoughts. God is within you as pure love. He sees beyond our human imperfections. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when there seems to be no way, he makes a way for us. Jesus came with a gift, my friends. Jesus is the gift, which we experience not only at Christmas time, but this is a lifetime gift, his presence within us, able to quench our thirst, to heal our lives, to set us free from lack and limitation. So my friends, although the road may look gloomy, no matter what we are going through, we are reminded that hope is within us as the Christ presence, a reservoir of health, life, peace, joy, light, and love. Hope makes the heart glad. Once we're alive, there is hope. In Romans 5 verse 4, testing results in hope. In chapter 8, 24, we are saved in hope. In chapter 12, verse 12, We are to be joyful in hope. In chapter 15, verse 4, we see we can draw hope from scriptures in the trials of life. And in chapter 15, verse 13, our lives can overflow with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, beloved friends, when things go wrong and you don't know what to do, don't sigh and fret. Life holds more gladness than regret. Crown hope your king. Make joy your queen. And love will brighten every scene. Rest assured, beloved friends, hope does make 
the heart glad.